Now, let's get more on the 20th anniversary of the BBC News Channel. In a moment, I'm going to be joined by two of the launch presenters from 1997, Maxi Mawini and Chris Eakin. But first, let's upset them and take a look at them in action 20 years ago. Hello, you are watching BBC News 24. I'm Chris Eakin. And I'm Maxime Mawinney. The headlines at 7 o'clock this morning. <laughs> right, well, that didn't... Uh, that, that, that surprised you both, didn't it? It's, it, it's, great, it's great to see, see you both. What, 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 were you, what were your memories of the start of this channel? That yellow shirt. Yeah, yeah. different hair. <laughs> yeah, because at the start, no jackets. That's right. No, that's absolutely right. I'm not sure about how long that lasted, a year or so. I mean, it really was. The idea was we were radical. I know Sky had been going for eight years, but in BBC terms, we, this was very different, uh, all meant to be, you know, nothing like what had gone before, very deliberately so, and hence no jacket. I have to say that was a complete disaster, the no jacket thing. I mean, it really, because we, we realised that absolutely nobody was taking this I was watching the news from elsewhere, and looked at, we looked at that and said, that's a disaster. That's yeah. Yeah. But I'm not going to, that's all I'm going to say. I think, I think my memory probably of the early days was chaos. Uh, but and I, I can't even say organised chaos because there was, we were dealing with lots of new things, lots of technology, a whole different new way of working, um, you know, the expectation of the public as well. And then, of course, you know, things would go wrong. So there was a lot of, could you just keep filling? Yeah. Uh, and, you know, <laughs> it was a new having to present in a totally different new way, it wasn't was. it? It was, very much so. But, yeah. I mean, we did have we did have our moments, didn't we? I, I, I remember on day one, we walked in in 1997. Remember, this is, you know, this is the year of Tony Blair. And I remember being told that, that no interview was to be cut short. You, you've got 24 hours. And, of course, you know, we know that's not how it works. I mean, I coach people now on how to deal with these things. The first thing we do is say, you have very little time. Mm -hmm. Get your message across. But we were meant to never say. The, wo the words they didn't want to ever mm -hmm. hear were, that's all we've got time I'm for. Yes, yeah, so we were never allowed to well, That lasted about two minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> well, we had a lot of time. We did actually have a lot of time. There was a lot of time, but there was a lot going on. And actually, this is an incredibly privileged position from which to watch what's going on. And I mean, in, your, in both your times, you've covered some, some huge stories, particularly for you in Northern Ireland. Well, I mean, huge stories from all over the world. And, and my journalism students sometimes say to me, don't you still want to be out there on the one story? But sitting where you are, Simon, you're covering everything on the world, what's going on in the world all the time. And it is a privileged position. I mean, we had all the Northern Ireland stuff, Bloody Sunday in particular. Um, I was there for the, the Bloody Sunday um, review announcement which was actually very historic we've had numbers of historic moments at Stormont of course constantly standing up there in the cold waiting for somebody to speak to each I, I, other I've done a couple of days of that <laughs> we all did it because there was so much going wasn't there yeah was, there was but the big difference and especially for the BBC mm. was that we were able to do this stuff at length live and and you got a real sense of how that the stories were developing rather than those sort of two, two and a half minute long packages yeah. in, the, in the bulletins, you, you got a build up of a story and a sense and an atmosphere of it, which is why we, we reasonably quickly got a big following. And you sometimes got more than a sense uh, and an atmosphere <laughs> of it. You actually went out and did things. And, and well, Maxine says that one woman's already asked her if you bring your waders in. Because He's actually many wearing people... them onto the desk. <laughs> there of their For many there. people, your coverage of the floods is one of those. Memories seared into the memory completely. Yes, funny enough, the controller of this channel I was talking to last night asked if I was bringing those waders back because they're owned by the BBC, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> the answer's no. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, again, that was, and, and it's, it's interesting because things with the likes of floods and those um, rolling stories. That, that became soap operas when they went on for days, if it was water and snow in particular, had huge followings. It's when the audiences on a continuous news channel spike, the graph just shoots up when you get to those stories. There is massive public appetite for them. And it was always an absolute privilege to be able to, to, to bring those stories alive and get, because often what happens is people go for a miserable time. And again, with the platform we had, you could get that across. And it made a difference yeah. to people. Okay, well, I think for journalists as well, Simon, from our point of view, the challenge of actually delivering that news over long periods of time. So that was a whole new way of working for a lot of us. I've forgotten how difficult it is to get a word in edgeways when, when you're in here. Um, but let me, let, me just, let me just pause. I how long the abuse was. Yeah, 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 let's, yeah. let's just remind ourselves of some of your, your best bits, both of you. Let's have a look. Oh, dear. <laughs> 
There are no special ceremonies. There really isn't much being said about this at all on the streets, people going about their normal business. It's another phase in what's being described as the normalisation of Northern Ireland. Oh, hang on a second. I think we're hearing some news here. It's a girl. Oh, my the Duchess goodness. Of Cambridge has safely delivered a daughter, we're hearing, at 8.34 a.m. this morning. That's coming from Kensington Palace. Smiling. As of now, <laughs> things have stabilised here. Look at this. It's just as I speak. It's quite extraordinary weather here today. But on the whole, it hasn't, frankly, been raining that much. And look, the heavens have just opened. Viewers from BBC World have just joined us from BBC Five Live as well, BBC News 24 and BBC One. Just take us through this final moment with the armoured vehicle clearly about to reverse in order to tighten the cable and pull the statue down off its pedestal. History, and as I say, a huge privilege to watch it from this position. Uh, but as you've already hinted, things don't always go <laughs> according to plan. No. No. Should we have a look? Should we have a look? At, and it's not just you two, it's happened to us all, and here's the absolute <coughs> proof. Look at this. <laughs> Hello and welcome for the first time to BBC News 24. I'm Gavin Esler. And I'm Sarah Montague. <laughs> we shall be joined by viewers on BBC One when Clive Myrie will have... <laughs> Now, the company is not commenting on the news at the moment, but a source has told the BBC that the cuts in Scotland could see the end of the operations formerly owned by British Steel. Simon's trying to find out a list here. Of well, it's, uh, it's drinks like Guinness, it's Johnny Walker, it's Bailey's, it's, it's an average Christmas evening for you. Um, <laughs> but uh, now coming up in a moment, we're joined by viewers... He's done it again. <laughs> No, it's all gone dark. <laughs> I haven't got the money for the meter. <laughs> you don't need one for a boomstick. Now, uh, let's Ooh. get the weather forecast on. I've lost my microphone. Very so. Just talk amongst yourselves, won't you? <laughs> <laughs> it's, still, it, it, it's still great to watch. Uh, the, the interesting thing is, I mean, I... I always think of this a bit like running air traffic control. You're paid for the moments when things go wrong. And it's just, with this channel, things used to go wrong a lot I thought more. I looked quite cool there when the floor manager came in and then went out again. <laughs> I didn't blink. <laughs> Did he... Actually, I didn't know he was there. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, he was all uh, behind you. Um, what do you miss most? Um, that's an interesting question. I, you know, we were talking, um, those pictures of Saddam Hussein's statue, we were talking about the way uh, you could, with live coverage, you could get a better sense of a story. And I remember in that particular one, when the stars and stripes were, were put on the statue by uh, the, the soldiers involved, and when that came in packages later, it was all just sort of happened. And, and you know, when we were watching it build, build up, and you thought, are they really going to put the flag yeah. there? It was, it was, the tension was just palpable. It was quite extraordinary. Mm -hmm. You can only get that with that sort of live coverage. And I do miss, I do miss that. Can I tell you what I won't miss? <laughs> I'm not sure, <laughs> but all right. OK, so that, the, the royal baby, for instance, and you being a great fan of royal baby stories, Simon, um, the pre prelude to that was like 20 minutes of talking to the two guests while we were waiting for that news. And if you've ever waited for a presidential But you're the queen plane, of filling. Well, I am. But if you've ever waited for a presidential plane to land and the, the gallery says, oh, there's the plane and it's a speck in the distance, and then they go to it, and of course they can't leave it. And then it lands and the door doesn't open for another 20 minutes and... I'm Irish, I can talk a lot. You, yeah, you can. Will you, you, I tell you what, you have put me off this job completely. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go. I've had enough. Well, I, think, I think just to relook, could you just get up, bring your chairs around yeah. here. Yeah. Remember how it was? Your link's up there, ready to go. I want you come on, there. Come on, come on. My chair. Can you give me your chair. Oh, you're you, oh, yeah, no, you have that chair. There we are. You know oh, this God. was happening. No. Like, just no, as we did in rehearsals. No, Chrissy can happening. sit there. Right. And let's, right. we're all going to put the clock back now. I wish you both... Can Good I, luck with this. Actually, I Thank forgot you. to say congratulations with the name Afternoon Live. That yeah. must have taken an awful lot of coming up with. Did you come well, up with well that one? one. Did that, you? Thank <laughs> <laughs> you. Uh, OK, football now and a very big night ahead for Northern Ireland. Gee, I'm on talkback. You're not on talkback. No, nobody's talking so I've to me. I'm got, going to continue. I've got the gallery They're yelling about They're hoping to make it into the World Cup finals for the first <laughs> time in it. more than three decades. They take on Switzerland this evening in the first They're leg of the qualifying playoffs. 
for Russia 2018. You can read this bit. Uh, our sports correspondent, Joe Wilson, takes it. What sort of script is this? Here's Joe Wilson. <laughs> In Belfast, 